Hey, good evening guys. Happy Saturday. This is Ariel from Aomeka and thanks for tuning in. Tonight we have another featured builder episode. I'd like to introduce you guys Nate He. Nate is a fellow Canadian great builder hailing from Montreal, Quebec and that is in our French side of things. So I uh, hope you guys uh, you know, tuning in just now uh, is going to enjoy the show. We have lots of stuff to talk about, everything from model kits, judging, competition, GBWC, Japan, and more. So uh, why don't we go and check out what Nate is saying. Hey! Hey, there he is. Nate, how's it going? How's it going, man? Good, oh, good. How are you? <laughs> I am good. You you sound more excited to this uh, than, than I am, man. I've been to this all week, man. I have no idea. Oh, awesome. Thanks for uh, joining <laughs> us on... To be here. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks for joining us. Uh, lots of stuff to cover tonight. So, uh, a couple of things. I've given you a kind of a brief introduction. The first time I've met Nate, uh, like formally, officially, and whatnot, uh, was last year in GPWs in Montreal. Uh, 2019 uh, that's I think the most conversation we had you were doing a panel yeah, yeah. Uh, you were doing a whole bunch of stuff you're running all over the place uh, it was kind of good to catch up uh, I saw you that's with your fun. build uh, your featured uh, kind of like work in progress your time with Majin Kawaguchi so lots of stuff to talk about but first up uh, for all those people who, who don't know you like who, who's this Nate guy why am I talking who this to this guy? guy who who is this guy right <laughs> why 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 is he even online that's the real yeah. question <laughs> so uh why don't you introduce yourself to the uh the the, the world and uh you know let, let them know about uh, Nate he who are you what do you do well hello world <laughs> all right so um my name is Nate um, I've been uh, building Gumpla and model making, I guess, for a little over maybe like 15 years now. 15, nice. I don't know, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, I've uh, been involved in the Gumpla scene uh, in Montreal, Quebec, and sort of you know, on the eastern side of Canada since uh, like 2012, 2013-ish. Okay. Uh, but I'm basically, like, uh, I focus a lot on uh, custom Gumpla building, kit bashing, and uh, smash building. I've been involved in the Otakuthon convention, um, helping out with panels dedicated to Gumpla and Gundam uh, nice. culture in general. I've uh, when the Gumpla Builders World Cup was here in Canada, I was uh, selected to be the judge for that. Wow. I believe in 2018, 2017, yes. 2018. Yes, your name did pop up. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, most recently, if our Canadian viewers are watching, uh, I've been uh, also um, been judging for the uh, Great Canadian Gun Club build uh for our own lo local homegrown competition there. Yeah. yeah. Great. No, and uh, from from what you've done uh, for us uh, for for competition judging and all that uh, obviously you have a passion you have an eye for things and <laughs> aside yeah. from the hobby though like what what do you do do you have any other hobbies do you work at a different field like can you tell us about that i professionally i i am actually a toy designer oh uh, I, I build a lot of toys uh, basically my I, my job is to just do concept art and prototyping of toys for kids Nice. So it's quite a fun job, you know, lets me stretch my creative ju juices, you know, every day just to, uh, you know, keep my skills sharp. Uh, other hobbies, I, I do enjoy photography. I find that in some aspects, uh, photography does, you know, coincide with gum um a lot, especially when we take our, uh, our own pictures of our uh, creative yeah. skills. It sounds like you have a lot of transferable skills between yeah. your hobby and whatnot. Yeah. Do, you, do you tend to spend a lot more time in photography than in model kit these days, or do you still kind of find that balance? Right now, I've been trying to find a balance. Uh, lately, I've been trying to get into uh, film photography. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, so, you know, playing old school, man. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing so, like uh, printed, uh, you know, yeah. photos. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, other than that, you know, it's always been uh, Gunpla does occupy a big chunk of my time. Uh, but I do, you know, enjoy other aspects of scale modeling i play a lot with like rc cars and stuff so that's just another side of uh, the model making hobby that's great so yeah. question for you uh you, you've been around obviously for in this model kit uh you know hobby mecha hobby for years what well, well, do you remember your first introduction to like mecha gunpla model kit like do you remember your first so, you know interaction with it 
this is actually pretty fun because like growing up when I was a little kid you know, growing up in, in, in China in my hometown we actually didn't have Gundam airing in the 90s so but we did have other like you know well-known Japanese mecha series airing at, at the time plus I was watching you know American uh, TV shows like Transformers and Robots, so like oh. giant, ro <laughs> giant robots. Giant robots. Oh, you yeah, are well, definitely always, showing. <laughs> right, in 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 my childhood, right? Yeah, so no. my in introduction yeah. to Gundam is actually Gundam Seed because growing up in Canada, when I came to Canada in the mm. '90s, I, I with my family didn't have like cable TV, so I didn't catch the Gundam Wing. Right? Okay. So my first introduction, serious introduction to Gundam. Was actually Gundam Seed when I was in high school, so that that was like the, the real like like uh, in, in, in intro. Like I remember, you know, just being like a edgy high school nerdy teenager and watching Gundam Seed on Fridays. That was, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? We, I was just gonna say, like when you start talking about Transformers and GoBots, those are some of the <laughs> names that, that that sticks out with me too. I could totally relate with that because yeah. I grew up with the same thing. Oh, wow, and yeah. uh, I think we were just yeah. talking about our age in regards to like how close we are yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. not gonna talk about our age because yeah, Asian age, age uh, yeah. is never never correct. Uh, we look yeah. way younger than we are because we are vampires. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. So, uh, yeah. like, so after after getting experience in, in what not experience, but like after being exposed, I guess, to mecha yeah. robots and whatnot, like. Like, how how did you get into like your first model kit? Do you remember buying your first so, model kit? So funny story. Uh, when I was in university, this is like circa 2011. Uh, my my uh, part time job was that actually like I was working at the post office, and one of my coworkers, uh, his name was Calvin. Uh, so he one day, okay, he, he brought like these the Hong Kong edition of Hobby Japan. And he asked me, say, hey, so do you build like Gundam models? And yeah. up to that point, I, I've never really, like, I, I've, I'm aware of Gunpla. Like, uh, you know, on from trips back to China, like, we, we had like Gunpla being sold in stores like that. Yeah. Um, so I, I, was, I was aware of their existence, but I never really, like, took a step into the hobby. So what, what got you to step in? Like, what yeah, pushed so, you to do there? So in, <laughs> when I, was, I, I remember, like, very, like, like crystal clear was just flipping through the, the hobby japan edition i forgot what month what year or what month it was yeah but like right away the two gundams the two mobile suits that caught my eye was one was there was a full page spread of the unicorn verka line art i think i remember seeing that yeah yeah, yeah. so then <laughs> I, I realized oh wow like this thing like just transforms from this like uh like uh seemingly all white looking mobile suit to this like beautiful Gundam with red accents, right? Right, yeah. So that, 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 the, the white and red color separation really caught my eye. So, whoa, this is a very pretty Gundam compared to the usual, like, you know, uh, primary blue, colors. Red, yeah, red, yeah. Right. So then you know, the, I was flipping a few pages more and then somewhere along the way, there was a, like a promotional image maybe of the Master grade ashtray red frame Kai with the big sword, uh, the, yep. no, the big the big bow, right? Bow the, sword, yeah. It, it, it's yeah. kind of similar and, to the blue frame, but it was meant for the red yeah, frame as a bow. Yeah, yeah. So I remember there was a, like little like thumbnails of that, and it just looked so cool. It's a giant robot with like a bow, and you could see the could pose in a different way. So right there, it was like, oh wow, these <laughs> models look like super cool. So yeah. like, if you look at the picture we have on, on screen right now, I think is that th those four. Or like my first foray, my first bills of Gunpla. The, yeah. double o, the, the little tiny double O uh, SD is actually the very, 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 very first Gunpla that I built, uh, uh, like all of those years ago. So nice. that, that, that was a very. Uh, so there's like an cool, SD. Cool. It looks like the unicorn. Uh, yeah. It looks like the uh, GP01 and the camphor. Yeah. Yeah. That is great. So yeah, because before that, I, I came from like the military modeling uh, background. I did uh, a lot of like, you know, uh, just ships and tanks and airplanes, like, you know, just gluing. Because those, those were model kits that you glue, right? Yeah, we're not so, as uh, as in the luxury of just yeah, snap yeah. fitting uh, so the not, kits. They're not snap fit. So when okay. I first opened up the SD gun, the SD double O Gundam, the first thing I was struck was by the plastic quality. Because, mm. you know, out of the box, that we, there's like a, this beautiful semi gloss colored, you know, all the runners were colored, right? Even putting on the the stickers was like wow just out of the box you have this very pretty 
looking like little neck. And so right there, then I knew like I have, I was on to something. <laughs> That's this, this, awesome. This is, <laughs> this is for this you. Is, this, this is something to be explored. <laughs> Right. So yeah, so, so that's really how it began. With this now planted in you, yeah. I, I I've seen your work. I've seen a lot of your your, your progress <laughs> pictures. I've seen yeah. a lot of your posts. And for yeah. those who who have not, I'm just gonna go to the next slide. Sure. And yeah. this is called the Jesta Havoc. Yeah. Okay. The Jesta Havoc. Before knowing Nate, before even hearing about Nate, I saw this in Pinterest. And I'm oh, pretty sure I saved this somewhere no going because like, you know what, look at this guy here with the oh, heavy wow. weapon system and whatnot. So uh, yeah. can you tell us more about this? Like, is this your first big custom? Is this your most current? Like, what's the transition? What happened between when you're when you're just snap fitting kits yeah. into this monstrosity, godly <laughs> looking, you know, specimen of a kit, right? Right. So um, I like in my personal view is like I, uh, I, I get bored very Easy to be. <laughs> so, so okay. Like, like after I, I snap fitted, like the, from the four bills we saw at the beginning to the Jesta, in between there have been a few like straight bills. Right? I've been, been building a few kits. Yeah. But just like, you know, after a while, like many modelers, I'm sure, will sell, share the same sentiment. It's like, you know, after doing a few models, you, everything sort of becomes the same, you know? Yeah. It's, it's always like, you know, you're, you're, looking at the manual, cutting apart, putting together. And then, you know, so at one point we're all like, okay, like how can I take this hobby to the next level? Right. right. So yeah. if we fast forward to the, to the year, I think it was the year was 2015. Okay. So at that time there locally in Montreal, we, we didn't really have like a Gumpla community going, you know, uh, but there was you no know, individual modelers and their friends building. But on Facebook, on social media, we didn't really have any groups that dedicated to Gunpla. And one year, every, oh, actually, every year around August, we had the very big anime convention in town. Uh, At the uh, Otakuton? Yes, yeah. So in 2015, right, I, I was partnered up with um, my, my friend Lou from uh, Sci-Fi Anime, who's one of the local uh, Gundam stores. We, we wanted to do like a, um, like a, and, and, and a few, like, uh, friends, we wanted to do a sort of like a panel on like uh, it was how to like, build stuff or like a, wor like a work Gumpla workshop. It was like the first oh. Gumpla workshop in o in Otakuton in, in in Montreal. We wanted nice. to like that to be the first step to, uh, to 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 introduce the hobby of Gundam to the locals. Uh, so then you know my panel was actually on like how to customize like models and Gumpla. So for the, this Jesta was actually built as a demonstration model for that panel, right? Nice. So, uh, um, so what I have right now here, Nate, okay. is uh, on the screen. It's going to take a while for you to refresh because of the delay. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have now the work in progress. So I see a whole bunch of di different parts here, different yeah. colors. And that's what I could see. You know, once you prime and paint everything in the final model, you, you kind of like uh, yeah. lose where it's coming from. But like yeah, we, yeah. We're looking at this picture right now, um, yeah. With all the different parts uncolored, and it looks like you know you have your plot plates, you have your your yeah. different parts. Can you tell us uh, like what was your vision like well, when you were putting the parts? Where did you get the parts? And then you know, yeah, how did so, you? So the parts, funny enough, I'm gonna show you a little thing there. So that, that, that this little box of parts <laughs> has been with me for a, a long time. Okay? So That's all you have? Own... No, no, it's <laughs> all my, my only parts. Been. It's like a like a few. A few, let's just put it that way. Okay, a few yeah. Boxes of parts <laughs> laying in my room, but uh, yeah. So what? When, when this build was going on, I had maybe like what, like five or six kits that I had just uh, laying around that I wanted to use parts from. Yeah. Like the way I started this build was, I imagined like, okay, well, I I, I was a big fan of the, the unicorn, right? So I obviously the Jesta being like a very heavy, not heavy, a uh, very like popular grunt suit. I uh, was like, I really liked the design of that, like especially the helmet. It was very like Master Chief like. If you get oh, uh, is that from Halo? From Halo, <laughs> right? So, so then I was really like, you know, just I, mean, I found the design very eye, eye catching. So right. my story for this was okay. It, so um, let this be like one of the like the customized like Ace units that would be sent into battle, but it would be like the vanguard, like the sort of like the spearhead unit. 
that goes into battle. So my mind is okay. Well, if it's like that, then it's gonna have armor, right? Because it's been plating and pack. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's where the idea for the heavy knee armor and the shoulder armor came in. I was like, okay, you know what? Uh, it'd be cool to have like these uh, these cool like shield looking things, like you know, just to protect it from incoming from projectiles. I think if you look at the chest, right, there, there's a few like kit bash yeah. parts. Uh, I think it was from the Gundam Age Gen the Genoans. That, that's the, the pink and white part is from the Genoans. Nice. And basically the, the rest was just, you know, using um, detailed parts from Gorobukiya, from Gundam Builders parts, uh, from Build Fighters. Uh, just, you know, uh, very, like the, this model didn't have, uh, it was very surface level modding, meaning that I, I kept the, um, I actually have the model with me right here. Let's see. So I, I, I kept oh, nice. basically, yeah, the frame and the uh, the armor of the stock chest uh, as is, and I just glued on and I kit bashed on armor on top of that without modifying the inner frame and the structure. So it was like I didn't have a, like only had maybe like four or five months to prepare for, for this. Oh wow! So like didn't 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 want to just go into like a full blown build, right? So this so for me it's like okay, well. Uh, you know, what's the most straightforward way? Straightforward way I can show people how to get to a good like kit bash, kit bash. Right. with detail up and armor. With detail um, up, yeah. We have right now on the screen uh, like a little close up of the head here. Yeah, can you tell so, us like what what was? I mean, it still feels to me it feels like a jesta. I know it's a jesta, but hmm. it, it's such a variation of it that like it, it's just different, like minor modifications from the looks of it. Right, so um, the stock jazz that has this like little bulge thing yeah. on top of the, the helmet. So I, I didn't really like that. I found it kind of, kind of I know, weird just like sticking up like that. I thought it was like a little visor, like the GM Sniper 2. That slides in but, and out kind yeah, of. Yeah, but it, it actually doesn't move. So in my mind, it's okay, well, I, I wanted to make sure that every part of the suit, the head, the arm, the chest, and the leg, and the feet, had some sort of like modification done to it, right? So that was the drive behind modifying the head. I was just digging through my parts bin. And you know, every model kit, high grade or massive grade, usually comes with these extra parts like for the handguard, the armor parts for the handguard. Yep. So if you look closely, like the parts are actually coming from a various handguard pieces <laughs> that I actually like just sawed and sanded. I think uh, later on you're gonna like, you probably have an image of the shoulder shield. Yep. That's just very simply like a uh, plot, plot fade with like little details from the HEUC base Jabber, I, I think. That has nice. Yeah. No, the, the oh, detail really here, popped up. A, you know, uh, the, yeah. And right yeah. now, I, I, I got a little bit more on the um, yeah. outside focus and it, it's like more of the, the whole body yeah. um, thoughts of it. And it looks mm -hmm. like it just stands out. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So customizing has always been kind of like your, your move next after uh, yeah. Like fun, fun, funny enough, like the uh, when it was after I did that panel, that first pa pa panel, uh, my friend Nick, who was the who's the uh, president of Gumpra Montreal, he approached me and said, "Hey Nick, have you ever heard of like GBWC?" Yeah, uh, I, I sort of knew about <laughs> GBWC, but I didn't know what uh, what it was. And I, I saw that online they had like web form submission, you know, and did you just have to send some pictures? So just for fun, I'm like, you know what? Just I have the pictures anyways. <laughs> and you send it to them. Send it. And then later on, I find out like at the end of the year that I, I actually won second place uh, North, North America with this Chesta. Wow. Because back then, Canada and the USA were lumped in. That's in, through in the uh, Bluefin, I believe, right? Through Bluefin. Yeah, that was through Bluefin back in 2015. Yeah. So Nate, the next image I have here is the mobile bear. Yeah. I, and I remember seeing this uh, last year as well. You brought it to uh, Otakotan for a show and tell. Uh, I really love the design. I remember seeing the work in progress on this one. Yeah. What, what is the story behind this bear right here? So this was, I think, for Otakotan 2017 or 2018. Like, group of friends, we just wanted to do, like, a sort of a group build of, like, what would be our mech if we were in Build Fighters, you know? Ah, uh, yes, um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so my idea was for, like, this little... I always loved the little the, the, the petite guy. The little mm. tiny bear. It was really super, super cute. I was like, okay, well, what if he were to like pilot this badass like <laughs> neck suit? <laughs> nice. What would that look like? Yeah. So the base suit is actually the uh, a modified um, HG mobile worker from Gundam: The Origin. Uh, that is a mobile worker. Get yeah. out of here. 
Yeah, it's oh, the chest. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, the chest has some <laughs> such good powers into it. It's very, very basic, uh, you know, enlargement of the chest. And they just made it into like a box uh, where I then just uh, placed in little kit bash details here and there. Wow, uh, that to, is to amazing. How about the uh, the hammer itself? Now, I play Overwatch. This reminds yeah, me of Reinhardt's yeah. hammer. Is that Reinhardt is that... was a big uh, inspiration, <laughs> definitely. Awesome. And believe it or not, the, the, the little uh, emoji face, the red emoji hammer face, yeah, yeah. that's at the part actually came from the base of an old school microphone. Remember those old, old school microphones yeah. we used in, with Windows like 95? Oh my like, god, that's had, what... <laughs> Yeah, little it's tiny big, hole, like yeah, circle. If you, if you Google that microphone, like like nineties my Windows my microphone, yeah. you can see that round part. That does I had that in my purse. Like, oh, cool! It's, I just dug that dug that up and I glued it all onto like a piece of. And it's kind of interesting all the stuff that we find in our parts bin, uh, it, just, just yeah. for use, right? Yeah, yeah. So the next part here, uh, it looks like another custom. Uh, I really like the design of this one, and it's the drummer, the drum dom. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And uh, wow, the, the color scheme, the execution, the the, the storytelling <laughs> on this, using the missiles uh, as as, as the actual sticks. drumsticks. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is amazing. What, what can you tell us about this build right here? So this one was a well, it was a, it was a Christmas competition hosted by Lou and Sapphire Anime. He wanted to be like dom themed, and I, I'm a big personal like. Dom fan. I think our our own like, our personal friend group that we're we're part of. We, we know how much I I love the Dom, and the, the reason is like we, we we all like the Zaku, right? The, the, the Zaku is like the 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 iconic Zeon grunt, yeah. Right? But like for me, it's like the Dom is like sort of the underdog, you know? Like it has a very iconic looking face with a cross shaped you know face. I, I just find the design so utilitarian, you know? Yeah. That, that you know I, I just fell in love with the Dom. Uh, so here, like, like the competition was like a very friendly competition, and my my idea was I always wanted to do uh, SD cross high grade. You know what one of those when when they actually combine I, like I've done that yeah. actually. I I, yeah, I haven't yeah. finished. Um, yeah. I started one with the lightning Gundam, so I I have the SD lightning and yeah. the regular lightning Gundam. I started it, but obviously like you know priority shift and and time yeah. restraints and all yeah, that. Yeah. But I am That's glad. Yeah, yeah, like I, it has that whole super deformed um, feel. But mm. not necessarily uh, an SD per se, right? So yeah. So the, uh, the the whole the whole procedure is that you you would take an SD head and you kit bash it with like high grade or even maybe master grade PTSs yeah. to make that proportion of like an extended uh, higher like bigger SD. But the thing is, uh, for the DOM uh, at the time, like the, the, the only DOM SD that we had was a very old school. SD and then looked everywhere and none of the stores online had it in, in stock. So yeah. my only option was actually to scratch build and kit bash that SD Gundam head. Uh, oh wow! I, got, I, I went head. I went further uh, too far. I was getting the drums already. Now let's go back <laughs> real quick to the it's head okay. here. Yeah. Uh, really so, cool. I mean, here. Yeah. yeah. So the, the Dom head is you see if you look at it, it's just a combination of like styrene and uh, parts. Like the red back of the head is actually from. The high grade uh, Val Wado from the big red mobile armor from double O A eighty three. Yeah, I remember I was looking through my parts bin, you know, just <laughs> looking. It's like, and I just saw this part. I was like, whoa, look, like this part of the the back hump kind of looks like the back of a dom. So let me see if I can like <laughs> hack it, hack and, and slash and kit bash. And, oh yeah, man, and it worked out. You know, it, I got the shape of it, and I was like, whoa. That's, that's, that's gonna be my head. I, and the second the part is, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it looks great. Like I couldn't even tell it was it was scratch built. Now, see, that's the type of build that Nate does, and, and it's such a clean execution. And speaking of clean <laughs> execution on this one, I'm yeah. looking at the drums. Uh, I, what's what's going on here? What are the parts you use for this? So the, the as, as for the longest time, I, I just for this build, I, I didn't want to just stick a giant rifle on it, you know, because I'm like, you know what? If I want this build to stand out. So I was thinking, okay, could I, should I go melee, have like a giant, like a blade or something? Yeah. But then I think, you know, it was like taking a shower or something. It was like one of those shower thought <laughs> moments. Of where course. Like, Hold on a second. I remember, remember the, that like commercial with the Energizer Bunny? Yeah. Right? It, it keeps going and going and going. Right? <laughs> and I don't know why it popped in my head. I don't know. But anyways, it's just like, oh, what if this is like a very comical themed build where it's like a cheering squad. 
like you know, put the Z on an army, right? But it's an SD because it's funny, it's cute. So the drum is actually built from parts from my when I went to Canadian Tire at the hardware store, bought some ABS like plumbing parts. Oh, okay, yeah, adapt, yeah, I see it now. Ad adapters, they had the right drum shape. If you sandwich two together, it kind of makes that shape, right? And I just rub wrapped it with a piece of uh, styrene. So I only had like I think two months or something to work on this. So it couldn't be something too complicated. Two months, holy cow, that's yeah. a lot of detail for two, two months, months, man. This, remember, this guy's yeah. working at speed of light here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so speaking of speed of light, we are going to do a quick break here. Um, why don't we uh, switch to a really cool, cool, cool video and we will yep. be right back. Hey guys, I just want to take this time to uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight in our show. Really awesome to, to have you guys here and commenting during our live chat feeds. I'm looking forward to hearing more from you guys. Also, uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send me a PM in my social media uh, platforms. You could reach me on Facebook at AOMecca, as well as Instagram at AO underscore Mecca. And if you have any interest in uh, joining us for a feature, or if you have anyone that we want to recommend to check out and be featured in the show, please send me an email. And you could see that at the bottom right hand of my screen, AOMecca.info at gmail.com. All right, thank you very much. And uh, why don't we go back to the arena? Check out what's going on there. And we're back. Uh, if you're just tuning in right now, we are joined by Nate. He is our feature builder for tonight. And we were just talking about some of his really cool custom builds. The next part of this uh, slide is probably one of the coolest things I've seen you do. Probably one of the most recent builds that you've done. Yeah. And this is the aftershock. I have the, the aftershock. aftershock. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, chills right now, chills. I'm just hearing chills about that. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly, what, what what can you tell us about this particular build and how awesome was it working with this type of project? Yeah, so the, the this build is actually very special in my heart because this was my first sponsored build uh, from um, uh, our local store, um, Samune Studio. So John and Kaz, who I'm, I'm friends with, they were very uh, like gracious enough to let me uh, start this project. So the um, this, I think the timeline, it, they didn't really gave, gave me a deadline. Right? I, I had like a flexible timeline, but I, I, I didn't want this build to take forever. So I set myself like a time of, I think, uh, four months. Right. right? So uh, just, 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 to, just to have, just you know, to get my, my build going. So um, the base kit is obviously the uh, mass based storm ringer, which I'm a very big, big fan of. Right. The, um, so um, basically, because I only had like you know, four four months to do this, I didn't want this to be a very complicated build. And I'm very, I was very, uh, I'm a big fan of Naoki's uh, the, the designs and, and work. Yeah. So uh, I didn't want to like bu butcher the storm ringer <laughs> design too much. Right, so but then again, in the end, like I, I ended up with something that was a bit different, but I was still very ha happy with. So the idea for this was uh, a very like bulked up. I wanted the suit to look very muscular, but like still very lean, right? Like still very fast and lean. Uh, like uh, the idea was to base this on like a fast ground attack mob mobile suit. Right. Nice. So, uh, so, so then the then I just went from there. Uh, the the feet of the Stormbringer I wasn't a very big fan of. It was kind of very <laughs> flat, right? Dog feet like. So yep. one of the first mods I did was actually to replace that. I think you recognize this. Uh, it was parts right. from the Master Grade Pat Labor. That's England. right. I I remember yeah. calling you out on this one because yeah, like I, I saw that. this I project yeah, and I'm yeah, going yeah. like, yeah. okay, yeah. I know that foot right there. I could see yeah. that feet right there. Yeah. Bam, yeah. Pat Labor, easily. Pat Labor, easily. <laughs> yeah. So after the thing about like bashing and modifying proportions is once you modify one thing, yeah, mo most likely your stock proportion of your your suit will be thrown off. So if I just grab the model with me right here. Hopefully, I don't break this live on TV. Hey, <laughs> so, there yeah. we go. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, once the feet have been increased in height, the rest of the suit has to be like readjusted to to have the right proportions, proportions. and all that. And that's something I think we want to let our viewers know. If you guys are yeah. new to kit bashing or yeah. or thinking of starting a new project, proportions is key. Uh, there's a lot of body types, a lot of like archetypes of bodies as well. Um, yeah. Our recommendation, I think you would uh, you know. Agree with me this one is just do your research 
Uh, yeah. Get some inspirational images. Um, Pinterest is definitely one of the uh, sources I would use I for love that. Pinterest. Right? Pinterest is great, man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, just go to any of those. Uh, in, Instagram is now becoming one of the, uh, like, you know, a source of inspiration because not only can you see the work of others, but you could also interact with the people yeah. that are creating it. Uh, yeah. So, good Sticking stuff. straight to your DM, right? <laughs> you know, it's easy. You know, exactly. Just ask the person straight. right away. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> next couple of uh, images here, Nate, it looks like you are now customizing the weapons. Uh, yeah. We have the, uh, what looks like a battle rifle here. Yeah, so the, the rifle was relatively straightforward. I think the base rifle, if I remember correctly, is the beam rifle from the GP01 or something. Yep, it looks yeah, like it. Yeah, yeah. so then uh, the barrel was extended with a uh, very simple kit, kit, kit. Bash with the beam saber from the Infinite Justice. Oh, nice! So it's actually nice. That, that's the I love that silencer look in military right right rifles. No? Yeah, very long so, barrel. Yeah. So uh, then the the yeah you know, the, the the little scope there is from like a Kolo Kia sniper rifle, I think. Lots yeah. of kit bash. Now here it looks like we have a detail of the shield, and it looks like this yeah. is like some kind of scribing. Yeah, the the shield I took it from. I think that's that's probably the Mark II. Sh Oh, oh sorry. no! no what kind? <laughs> what it's kind of uh, yeah. eye do you yeah. have? I'm gonna call yeah. you out on this now. <laughs> yep, it yeah, is the GM shield. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the GM shield. Oh, just a, a basic scribing yeah. from the looks of it here. Like because this is the shield, right? Um, like I, I didn't want there to be too many scribed panels because the other thing is I, I I tell people is like if you scribe too much of the armor, if there's too much armor separation. It sort of gives it like a cracked eggshell look, right? Because the armor is supposed to be strong. Solid, right? yeah, you, to take the you hits, too yeah. Many, if you have too many, like, little tiny armor, for me, anyways, my personal opinion is that it, it makes it look less than, like, one piece and less durable. Right. So for something like a shield, right, you need to be something, like, that could protect the mobile suit. So I, I didn't want to go too crazy with the panel lining there. Very simple, you know, thing. And uh, my, my friend John always tells us, it's like, you know, uh, if you have too many panels, then it creates a problem when you put decals on. Cause, yeah. Because you know, the then you want... have to slice it, yeah, you right? got to mold so, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want too many decals either because then, you know, it well, the you could you could show the the, the amount of sponsors yeah. you know <laughs> yes. the the kit yeah. has this kit yeah. is must be really going fast if it's sponsored by caution warning yeah. sign hatch yeah. open and danger look at that top yeah. four uh, sponsors yeah. Uh, yeah. next couple of images here it looks like we have a silhouette now of what uh, the the piece is looking like it looks like it's primed or it's in gray mode yeah I I, I think we all love when we actually prime our art yeah because. <laughs> Like it, it sort of re erases any doubts that you have previously, because you know, a lot of times I I'm like I'm self I'm like self critical, yeah. just seeing like you know in, in in the stock kit color sometimes your eyes you know get messed up right because everything is not in one color you have trouble seeing the overall shape of the suit. Yeah. Um, so priming you know definitely helps to bring out to like just reset the color palette to. Um, okay. To something like neutral so that you can think about like what your next color scheme is going to be i mean for, for 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 this color scheme i went with like the classic gundam colors because one thing i learned through this is that if you want your gundam to look heroic yeah. he heroic there's only like a certain color palette that will go well with that right and that, that was too dark Right, yeah. you can't go too dark because then it looks too evil. <laughs> too evil, and and that's what I was gonna get at because like okay. uh, one of the questions I have written down here is like yeah. when you are selecting your yeah. color scheme, your color pattern, do you go through a whole bunch of images first to see which one works? Do you do you go through Photoshop? Like what what is your workflow between primer and and color? Did you select your color ahead of time, or yeah. it, like way before you primed, or did you select it after it's primed? So I think when I'm just kibashing in general, yep. like right away in my mind, like I, I have already kind of like what color I want to go to. But, you know, like what you said before was like, you know, I always go through Google and something to, just to see what other people have done. Right. Because it's good to get inspiration to see. And that also gives you an idea. It's like, oh, you know what? Uh, or like, you know, red on this mobile suit might not be what I'm going for, right? So then Photoshop definitely also helps. But then again, it's very time consuming to Right. Yeah, just to get that prepared. Out. And uh, if I had the time like that, that would be something that, would, that I would do too. 
No, it looks good. And we're just cycling through some of the images here. So we just looked at the mm -hmm. chest area. We're looking yeah. now at the back. Now, here's a very interesting modification at the back here. And I'm trying to like figure out all the pieces here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. It has that, it very much feels like a Gundam suit. It has that whole EFSF feel. But what uh, things that stand out to me are the little details that you added onto this. Mm -hmm. From the uh, extension of the chest, yeah. are those the rocket pods from the GP02? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes! <laughs> ding, ding, ding. There we go. What did that I win? <laughs> yeah, so I, I love those parts. I mean, they're like very like detailed um, missile pods, like, especially the, uh, the the side. You see that they're very, like, even if it's a stock like part, yeah. the, the, the molding is so fine that you can see like panel lining like already that's that's present oh, and it looks, basically it like yeah. there was it's just the perfect size to increase that chest to bulk up the, the chest a little bit if i was being a bit self-critical i would say maybe like the width is a bit too wide but i think overall it sort of works with the overall like height of the leg and the arm no oh, it, it definitely and, worked yeah. uh, also with having the two missile pods like uh, sticking out from the front it gives a very like buff look you know so which was the look that i was trying to go for buff but not yet like not thick yeah like, the, like muscular but it could still give the impression that this thing can move very <laughs> fast and it so. very much has that presence of like the bulk shoulder but it's also a functional thing uh yeah. you know with the booster at the back or the missile uh, yeah. pods in yeah. the front and that was, yeah. caught my eye when i was looking at your uh, your stormbringer <laughs> nice. uh, it, it's it's really cool yeah. um, so right now we have a side by side of your Jesta and the uh, Stormbringer. Yeah. Are these like? Funny would you enough, say? Yeah, yeah. Go on. Yeah, funny enough, like the, the looking at that picture, I think in between the two builds, I think that was uh, 2020 versus 2015. Right, that's five years. I was gonna say, what are the between. difference between the two, and what yeah. are your top three uh, yeah. lessons learned that you applied so, from the Jesta to the to the Stormbringer? You know, the first lesson is actually that this is a good maybe tip to a lot of. Uh, beginner kid bashers out there who are just starting out. I mean, I, I, I don't consider myself to be an, an expert by any means. I'm like far away from, 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 from being a pro. But uh, like for me, <laughs> the, one, the main thing that I learned was that, look, if your overall mobile suit depends on like uh, having a lot of weapons to make it look, look cool, then it means that your base design maybe wasn't very good to begin. Okay, so okay. for me, it's like a very successful mobile suit design. Okay, it's something that looks good even without any weapons. Okay? Nice, that so is a if, good. If, yeah. if you want to, I, I can give one example. Is if you look at the Freedom Gundam, okay, the Freedom Gundam from Gundam C. Right? If you take away the backpack, okay, take away the backdrop of the Freedom, it, it kind of looks a bit derpy. Like for for me, anyways, it just because the Freedom looks so cool with that like wing backpack is so iconic to the design yeah right for me it's like if, if it depends on a backpack to look good that means that the base gundam maybe <laughs> could be improved that right? is true so, very true so, yeah so if you look at the side by side of the stormbringer with the jesta right right away the jesta looks super cool with like the weapons but if i'm being like a bit critical uh, of myself is that i think the jesta like look cool maybe because of the over weaponized thing and maybe not necessarily because of the mech so right. for that like for now for my kit batches i always focus like mainly on the mobile suit itself right nice. if the mobile suit looks good just naked like without any weapons you know without any giant backpack if it looks good as is it means that any part any weapon that you add onto it will make it look even cooler okay? oh man i'm gonna take that to heart because uh right. my so, last build I made a giant backpack, and I think you've seen uh, some of my builds. They're no. all giant <laughs> backpacks. No, no, I mean, uh, I, I, everybody has their style. I mean, yeah. there's just no wrong way of doing it. But just like my personal philosophy is that it's just that, you know, uh, Mecca is such a diverse subject. So many infinite possibilities. Absolutely. The gunplay is freedom, right? <laughs> so you can, like, literally, just any way you can go about this is just for me, it's like, you know, it's very important for. The actual robot to, to look good really good yeah. so, so that, that good. is that is great nate uh yeah. next slide here and we're gonna yeah. shift gears a little bit to your i guess your ongoing project yeah. uh and it is the camphor uh, yeah. giant 
Git bash ongoing. So, yeah. Like I, I, I've seen this in person as well back in Montreal, and yeah. uh, this is something that you was playing. Uh, Long term project, man. That was. Uh, this, how this, this how did amazing. this start? How did this start? Where are you going? What's so, the hold up? You've done projects that are like <laughs> two months, five months, and this yeah. guy here is like over a year now, and I haven't yet to see Prime on this. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like, 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 I've always been a big fan of massive grades. Okay. So because for me, like a massive grade on Gundam, just that size, yeah. one hundred scale. Actually, one hundred and maybe one seventy two. Because I know some like. Kids are also 172 or 160. Like, you know, I'm a big fan of like bigger models. So Master Grade 1100 uh, is like the right size. So I, for the longest time, I've, I've wanted to do like a very like complex and custom like Master Grade build. Nice. Okay? So this was my like, and then and, like, I'm a big fan of Xeonic, Xeon designs right so um big zeon right there so, folks yeah so, so, <laughs> yeah so so then like i was like okay well uh i i had the master grade Garagoda in my display case for the longest time i'm just wondering okay well, what, what can i do with this suit you know because it's a nice blank canvas if you if you look at it right so and i'm a big fan of grunts mm. obviously so the story for this if you look at it, the name is called the comp doga so my idea for this was okay well what if Neo Zeon was evaluating like various weapon platforms based on the Garadoga platform. Okay, so we all know that's gonna have another prop here. The Yagdoga, okay, yep. the, 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 this is the Yagdoga from Shark's Counter Attack. So, th this is also in the lore, in the Gundam lore, this is also a suit that was based on the Garadoga, okay? right? Yep. But uh, in, in German, Jag means to hunt, to hunt. But if you look at it in German, uh, the word Kampf is to fight. Okay, so so I'm like, okay, you have a you have the Yag Doga. Yeah. What if you have something called the Kampf Doga? Or, but the thing is, if you look at it, the, the if you think about it, the, the Kampfer is the German word for fighter. Right. I'm a big fan of the Kampfer. It was like um like from double O eighty. So I wanted right, to sorry. see. Okay, <laughs> what if? Okay, Neo Zion built a Garadoga to the spec of the camphor, like a fast attack interceptor, you know, uh, mobile suit. What would a mis uh, mix and match of a camphor with a Garadoga look like? And so that was the base for this um, for this mobile suit. And you can see that it's, it's a very fat, it's a very thick. Big very boy. Thick, it's a big uh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just, I, I wanted to do like a very like, like bulky looking uh build for the longest time so um yeah so that so that's really how how it began and th this was like th this build literally kicked my ass from <laughs> beginning to now like it was so it was very challenging to work with like curve or curvy gear parts and i, I want to ask about those curves yeah. so we have this image right now on the screen and it's the foot yeah. um yeah. I, I am looking at it with just in awe how many little pieces you can probably um, recognize is, some of the pieces, I do recognize but... some of them, but like, what is your thought yeah. process when you are creating uh, this custom? Like, for example, this feat right here, like, what were you aiming to achieve uh, with the parts you have? Uh, so, the, the feat actually came from the, um, as a result of the sheer weight of this. In the previous, one of the previous few pictures, you saw, like, the, the giant chest there with the giant, like, putty. Yeah. It, it looked like a giant, like, Chinese bun. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, now I'm hungry. Point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 um, like the, it was like there was so much putty at that point. I haven't like sanded it yet. Yeah. Like the, I knew that this was gonna be a very heavy like model. So right, right away, it's like okay, it needs to stand on very firm footing. Right. So the feet had to be very very big. The stock Giradoga feet, although were very were kind of big, were not big enough. Okay. So in my parts bin, I actually had the Master Grade Sazabi feet. The first oh, massive yep, grade yep. is actually not the not the top. Yeah. So the the, the red the feet that actually came from this the Suzabi. Uh some of the joints, the joint I think was from the high new. I sacrificed the high new ver ver uh high new ver God. See right here, yeah. high roller. This yeah, guy right so, here, any was, parts from any kits we're gonna use to make uh, these customs. <laughs> that's why like my display case is never full. <laughs> they always end up in the parts bin. <laughs> oh <laughs> so, man. Yeah, so uh, some plot plate you see just to like establish the, the shape I'm working with. 
Right. So like at this point, I'm I'm not I'm not th thinking about like any de surface details yet. For me, the most important thing is just to have pro the proportions yeah. like we said before and the shape. Because so much in, so much of Gundam and mech design is on the shape, right? Like 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 if you have the right shape of the part, then any kind of surface detail and any kind of weebly uh, surface part that you can bash onto that will make it look better. So. So that was very important for me was to actually get the right shape. So at, at, at this point, I have this technique where I just use parts from the parts bin to form roughly the shape that I that I want right. in my mind, the, the visual reference to see where I'm going. And then I would go on it with sculpting putty to refine the shape even more. So if you fast forward a little bit, I think we'll have a picture of the shin uh, Oh, we're we're way, we're way probably forward. We are oh, now, uh, yeah. it looks like, oh man, I can't. Uh, I want to say, yeah, I don't think we are in the shin piece. Like this is the lower leg cover. Yeah, the lower leg cover. So you can see I sort of mixed it with like, uh, just to get that like curvy shape, right? Yeah. That was a mixture of parts from, I think the Sazabi, the Hainu, and the GP02 with some plot wow. fading on, on the side to, to just establish that very basic armor shape. And on top of that, I, I went on it with putty to you know to give it a more refined uh, shape. Because like this is my first time doing like a Zionic custom, right? And being curvy, you you need that. I needed to see it in real life to to to, to see how I would go about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah, so, we, we yeah. right now we have the image of the uh, I guess body shot uh, of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is like a work in progress shot. It's yeah. fully complete. Yeah. Like there's multiple colors. There's like greens, there's reds, there's blues, yeah. there's some unsanded parts there. Like now that you're taking these yeah. uh, these whip shots, like uh, like what what can you tell uh, the, the the viewers about like how you feel about the build right now at this stage? How do you feel about well, it? For the longest time, the thing that was bothering me the most was really the like the knee and the thigh area because like like it is just I don't know it's hard to describe, but it, sometimes it, you, you stumble upon like a design, a curvature of a certain piece, and it just clicks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so That's for it. the longest time, I was just trying to play around with like how would the thigh look, you know, uh, to make it look good with the rest of the suit, right? And then you know, in the in one of the earlier work in progress pictures, the proportions just wasn't right. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it looked fat, but the thing is, like uh, the way the knee bent, uh, I was just looking at it like nice, and evenings would be spent. Just looking at the thing and <laughs> seeing, like, okay, well, what, 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 what can I tweak, right? right. What, what can I make? So then, so the last, uh, thanks to the quarantine and the lockdown, I was able to work from home, and I had a lot, a lot more time to just for focus on the build. Yeah. Uh, so I was able to just really like, uh, uh, just like uh, combine all the parts that I have to make the the, the thigh and knee that I have now. Uh, oh, so you can see, great, yeah. yeah, in the picture, there's some, uh, there's, there's the leg parts from the HHG UC Zisa, uh, some parts from the high gog in light blue, and I think the knee part is from the uh, foam mechanics Barbados, the, the knees of the Barbados. So just playing around, you know, playing around with shapes. Don't not worry about detailing and scribing right now. Just you know, getting the right like shape, shape and the form yeah. of it. No, it yeah, looks yeah, good. Yeah. Because, um, uh, yeah, 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 I can just show very quickly, like, this is what that, like, thigh armor looks like oh, now. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's been covered with putty, right, to form that very, like, primitive-looking, like, curvy, curvy shape. What and I you... would do next is just to take my drum uh -oh. and stand this to see what I can, like, sculpt from that. Hey, question yeah, on that one. What, what, right what type of uh, material putty do you use and what type of sandpaper do you use when you're uh, there doing these? There was a uh, couple. You may you can use, I think, locally. What we have available in Canada, we have this thing called uh, Needy Put. Uh, yeah. There's also a epoxy sculpt, which is what I'm using now. Uh, you also have the, I think, the Tamiya polyester putty, right? And uh, that's very popular. And you also have, I think, I think Mr. Hobby makes one too. There is so one. It's like a Mr. Putty or something. Mr. Putty, like yeah. Because some of the putties are different in, in consistency, right? Uh, some are mostly for like fixing uh, sick marks and, you know, 
uh, scotches, whereas right. some are very hard. Like this, this is like a rock right now. This is like, <laughs> rock well, don't don't press yeah. on it. You might break it. No, it's not gonna break. <laughs> I, I can throw this around the room and it's not gonna break. Well, maybe it will break. I'm, I don't want to test it out. And, and what <laughs> kind of sandpaper or sanding yeah. do you do for this? I uh, mostly just use my Dremel, like any kind of rotary tool, just to you know have like a little drum sender. Okay. Just, uh, you know, so then you just go on and just carve, just carve it. <laughs> Just to, to, to get it into the right shape. You're going to be covered head to toe. I mean, I'm going to be covered in head to toe with clay dust. But I uh, just have to... I usually, I usually do that like on, on, on the balcony. So for warning for people who are sanding and, and doing this Dremel yeah. stuff, make sure that you guys uh, wear masks and protective yeah. gear so you don't want that kind of stuff going mm -hmm. in your system. Now, speaking of uh, breaking your stuff, we are going to go to a quick break. Uh, we are going to be back again with Nate, and yeah. I think we're going to switch to the stories. Some of the yeah. stories that is not really mecha related, but more of his life experience. So stay yeah. tuned. We'll just do a quick break. Hey, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the stream so far, and thank you for tuning in. Now, if you're into Gunpla and mecha as much as I am, or would like to know more about mecha and Gunpla in general, I'm actually part of an amazing online community called Side6. All the information you'll need to find Side6 will be part of the description of this video. You could check us out at facebook.com slash groups slash Side6, on Instagram at Side6 underscore Mecca, and for any future information or news, you could check out our website at www.side6.club. The community is amazing. Lots of like-minded people that are into the mecha and gunpla sharing works works in progress and pretty much talking about the hobby and everything related to the mecha and gunpla lore so hopefully you get a chance to uh, check us out we're always open to new members of all skill levels and yeah let's just keep getting the community moving forward all right thank you for that and uh why don't we go check out the arena see what's going on there and we're back uh again if you guys are joining us we are joined tonight by nate uh nate he Hello. master scratch builder <laughs> mr i i mash all the things <laughs> I, I all the kids. Uh, speaking of breaking your kits i have a photo here now of your work studio from the looks of it right yeah so this is i'm actually um, i'll be moving uh to a to, to a new house soon so this is actually my current workspace Nice. You can see, like, the, on that table, I have, like, pretty much all the kits that I use for my parts. Nice. Like, there's a lot of, uh, like, there's, like, uh, high-grade boxes and master-grade boxes are great to keep, like, runners and just parts in. <laughs> you know, there are like, organizers available out there, yeah, right? Yeah, so... <laughs> I really have to clean that up. I mean, right now, like, uh, I was telling, like, uh, our friend Simon, like, I was, like, um... I was, it's organized chaos. <laughs> like everything's messy, but I kind of know where it is. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. So, like, there's a box for weapons. There's a box for legs. And... <laughs> for for me, <laughs> so... it's like weapons, parts, and then there's the PC parts. Then you have yeah. your your manipulators, and then yeah. the clear parts. Now the clear parts, I have them separate because you never know when you're gonna use them. They're good yeah, for sensors. They're, they're good, good for, for like something, yeah. for something. And I I can't get myself to throw them. So when you, when you get, when I get the sprue, I don't know if you do this, but when I get the sprue, I'll I'll purposely chop off like unique colors. Like uh, mm. RG Banshee has some really good yellow orange that I've never seen before. So I, mm. I save that. Uh, yeah. I have a lot of green because of the uh, the beam sabers and purple and whatnot. So those yeah. are the kind of stuff. I, but from the looks of it, yours, I mean, it's it, it's a really nice studio. Uh, it looks like you have a lot of space to work with there. You also have a display stand uh, over here. What would you say is the most you display as in what, what genre, oh, sorry, what type? And what would you say is your most prized uh, collection piece in that display case? The, well, there's a, the, the, that display kind of rotates every now in a while. It's funny yeah. because actually, like uh, sometimes my mom would like clean the, the house in the room, and then she would actually pose my gunpla for me. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. <laughs> so like, cause she, she she likes like playing around with like the, the posing. Like yeah. some of them are actually like po po posed by my mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. So the the um like uh no I I like mostly if you look at them they're like. A mixture of like master grades and a few high grades. Uh, you know, the most prized possession is probably just my customs, right? Is the ones yeah, that that's that's a the, very valid thing. It's like one of a kind. Well, yeah. It's the model models that I uh, put most time in. Of course, you know, you have my uh, very first builds that I'm never gonna throw away because that's just part of like who I am. It's, Your it's history. Part, it is a very history. history. 
Uh, yeah. Speaking but, of, uh, yeah. yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. Uh, go on, finish your history first. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, there's a lot of like, uh, there, there was, there was uh, some hybrid models that have been sacrificed. Mm. Because, yeah. uh, because, you know, I, I, the thing about working mostly in uh, master grade is that uh, it's great because you can use high grade parts for detailing and, and kit bashing, right? And high high grades are cheap. It's a cheap source of getting good. <laughs> it's affordable. Car. Most it's are affordable. affordable. <laughs> yeah, it's an affordable way of getting like parts. So I, I have I bought like high grades before. Yeah. Where I didn't even build it. I, I just used it. Just went straight to the parts bin. Oh man. <laughs> so yeah. But one one high grade that I will never hit, that I will never sacrifice is the I'm not sure if that's visible. Uh, and right in front of the Sinanjo is the by Ireland custom. I, I I love that suit. It, it, it's so cool. It's a it's, cool uh, suit. I've worked with that as well for uh, a local contest here, and it's surprisingly huge. Like it, it's a larger kit. Yeah, it, it's the uh, it's one of the larger uh, high high grades. I was actually surprised. The box is big for, for yeah. Like, uh, yeah for, for and speaking of history, and that's where I was going to jump in here. A, a historic yeah. moment last year yeah. when you had a chance to meet this particular person that particular fellow <laughs> what happened here nate it looks like so, it looks like it rhymes with asian who's an rhyme. asian <laughs> can you tell me who yeah. you just met here what's going on so, here <laughs> yeah so so in 2018 it was 2018 20, uh 19 2019 oh my god I'm getting history come on man stay oh with god. the program nate <laughs> 2019 uh we we had the pleasure of welcoming uh Beijing Kawaguchi himself that's to correct. Otagothon and to GBWC. Um, so he did the judging, the judging for GBWC East. Um, and then uh, during one of the uh, the break se sessions, yeah. um, like my friend Xiao, who's actually one of the, our co-judges for the uh, Gunpla build-up, the Canadian build build-up, he told me, hey, like, why, why don't you build your customs here for Meijing to look at? Because Me Meijing was just hanging around the room, you know, like just checking out the, the models and the, the displays. So I, I literally like ran home to like, <laughs> grab all of my models in the box, and like I ran back to the convention before Majin's next panel to have him look at my uh, my uh, my my work just to get some criticism one on one. Like it was a great like one of a time thing. Like I, I was like one in a life one once in a lifetime yeah. experience to have him to have like the Majin Kawaguchi look at <laughs> your work in, in person, right? And like uh, the, the gentleman from uh, Gunpla uh, Toronto Association, I forgot his name. He was the translator for us. Right. So yeah. So um, basically, uh, he, in the picture, he's looking at the Kampf Doga, uh, just to give me some advice on where to go next. And this is also a tip to our to our viewers: is uh, uh, what he told me was looking at the build was uh, put a, put a lot of emphasis on the chest area of the mobile suit because usually that's where our eyes go. Is that chest area? That's correct. Area, area like the head and the chest area. So make sure that like whatever you do, like you make your chest area look cool and detailed. And, like, so because that's where your core is. And that's a metaphor for all our twitchers out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is great. Like yeah. so. So what? What were? What would you say was your first you know, reaction when you're like, oh, oh crap, Majin is literally looking at us. Yeah. Like, what are some it, of the it, first it, things going through your head? Do you remember that? Like I, I, I was so nervous. I was like, <laughs> oh my god! Like what? He was so respectful. Right? Yeah. He's very professional. Like just looking at each build. You know, he didn't really like. Like he actually took time, like looking at each build, just just to see. Like oh, like okay, like he like for for the bear, for example. Yeah. You know, one 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 thing that he gave me was uh just uh one thing you could do in the future if you do a build that's similar is where you when you have the console and the control panel. Um, you can put more detail, like little dials and whatnot, to make it look nice. like uh, real technical. The drum, the drum dom. Uh, one of the tips that he gave me was uh, like uh, make sure that if you pose it, make it look like it's striking the drum, and like, give it a really dynamic action pose. And for the Kamp Doga, he actually like I think he touched the, the le left side of the chest, so like that part <laughs> has been blessed. Oh, you're not, you can't paint it anymore now. I can't paint it anymore, man. Oh, it's done. That 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 camp doga is done. No, it's done. Put it away. Yeah, we're over it. Yeah, he told me for that build, it's like put a lot of focus on on the chest, put a lot of detail, like interesting things in the chest, because that's the core of any 
And Majin uh, judged that event as well as part of yeah, being the judges. Did, yeah, and yeah. I remember, I, I pers- <laughs> my, my side story, not to take your, th- your thunder away, just, I did meet him too eventually in passing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. He was walking, I think it's just after a judging session, and they were walking okay. uh, to the uh, this, I don't know, some kind yeah. of retreat area for the kitchen. And I, yeah. I see Victor, and I see Majin, and I'm like, yeah. nope, this is happening. So I go yeah. straight at it. Hi, I'm Ariel. <laughs> nice to meet you. Mm. <laughs> no, I, I asked golden very politely. Man. Yeah, it was. Yeah, golden opportunity. For yeah. my, for my, just to relate with you, you're right. Like you're, you're looking at, you're talking with someone, you're conversing, you're in the presence of someone that has been yeah. part of the Gundam history, a, a, yeah. a, a high-ranking judge, the yeah. guy that's involved in so many Marvel. Uh, model suits and mobile suit uh designs uh yeah. just to be in the present of, and having him judge the contest i think good treat for yeah. canadians as a motivator uh and yeah. hopefully he will come back again in the next uh while i mean he's from I japan so. and all the way so, so. Yeah. Yeah. when travel uh becomes uh, apparent again now speaking of travel yeah. nate yes you travel yeah. <laughs> I, i've been to a few places you, you yeah. traveled <laughs> yeah. what are we looking at here it looks like there's a crowd of people and you're taking so, photos of uh, i think a week after Otaku 2019, uh, Xiao and I, we actually traveled to Japan for our, our, our vacation. Nice. And this was taken at C3 AFA to- Tokyo, a very famous like Bandai a- anime convention. Wow. And that's the only place that you can legitimately buy and legally buy uh, third-party resin kits. Wait, right? wait, wait, so, wait. Legally buy resin yeah. third-party kits. Yeah. Explain yeah. what's going on because there. Because usually, like, um, like if you look at resin kits, there's a lot of recasts floating around. Because technically, I, I think legally, you're not allowed to sell things because they're licensed by Gundam is a licensed by Bandai, right? Right. Like, any garage kit like that you see that's like a... That's like a like a third party kit. Technically, they're not allowed to be sold except at C3. That's the only event where it's sanctioned by Bandai that you can actually sell <laughs> your personal like personal garage collection. Kit. A garage yeah. Kit. So that that's the only place that you can go. So if you look at there's a few images that, that I took inside the convention. It yeah, the big, there, there's. I'm just yeah. gonna go cycle through some of the photos here. Yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah. you are beside a Sinanju. That's not you. Sorry, it's a zombie. It's a zombie. I call you. I call you. Ah! 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 ah. (laughs) The tables have turned. Okay. Okay. Sorry, my mistake. (laughs) Still not you. Nah, just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. So, but yeah. Anyways, it's just there's way too many pictures to show. I'm just putting like some of my favorite. uh, Yeah. There's now a set of like what looks like uh, some GMs. There's the Sinanju. So I was looking at this picture before I switched to the other one, and that's my excuse, and I'm gonna live by that. All right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe uh, it or not, in that picture with the Sinanju and all the GMs, yeah. every single one of those models are made of paper. Oh, wow. They are paper models. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, are you serious? Models. Yeah, they were done. I remember. I don't remember the name of the art artist. It was a guy in, in Japan. But like the, the way he designed like the proportions yeah. of the, those, those paper models is just fantastic. Nice. Fantastic. Nice. Like just the, it's just, yeah. There's another Scale. picture here, uh, yeah. the uh, yeah. Zeta. It looks like the it's like a, one of the. That's also it? paper. That's that's, pa- that's also paper. paper. Holy yeah. Cow. So the scale I think is 160. Yeah, it's a bigger it's a bigger scale than the other scale. ones. Yeah, they, they're from there. Uh, if I could only find out the name name of the artist, maybe I could find them online. But anyways, I, I was just mind blown by that by that display. Next like, one it was, here it so cool. yeah. is a uh, Nightingale, from the looks of it. Yeah, that that that's a very famous. I think in Japan, I think it's, it's behind. It says D D D G R S or something like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's like a it's like a third party uh, resin kit. It's because the Nightingale in one one hundred. Yeah, it's huge. Oh right? yeah, it's it's a massive I, kit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw the one forty four kit, the the resin kit, and I found just just looking at it, it's like it's the perfect like Nightingale size. And it doesn't but look that, like SD or any because I've seen the SD yeah, Nightingale, yeah, but this yeah. one is like a full-on like kit yeah. from the looks of it. Yeah, the yeah. uh, it is, it is, I think it's the full like resin kit. It was sold out on day one, man. And you couldn't you couldn't get a hold of it. It's, Speaking uh, of resin kit, here's another one. It looks like a Zaku. That one, I love that one. It's uh, I don't know who did it. Like, I, again, like uh, I, I'm not fluent in Japanese. 
So yeah. I, can't really, I didn't really find out the name. So of the are movie. there like stuff like that, like just in display, like non painted yeah. resin? So there's a modeling, a modeler's display section, like a modeler's mar market, right? That you right. can go browse freely. Everybody has their, every artist has their kiosk. Imagine like the artist area in most conventions that we have here, except every booth is like a, like a custom resin kit maker setting their stuff. Nice. Like if you if you wanted like a very rare resin conversion kit or a very rare advanced Zeta like custom resin kit, that's the place to, to get it from. Wow. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of places to get it from, this guy got some more hugs from yeah. Kawaguchi himself. Like, what, yeah, what, what so, are the odds of this? What's going on here, man? <laughs> so like a week after I met Meijin in Montreal, yeah. I actually met him again in, in, in Tokyo. Um, right. So in, in Chiba, actually. So, so then, you know, uh, here the, um, I'm with my friend Xiao. And then the funny story is that we were actually camping outside the Bandai booth. Because like, <laughs> to get a photo session with Kawaguchi or to have a panel, like a, a workshop with him, yeah. you have to have bought a Bandai product to give you oh. like a bow, bow shirt. But we, we didn't buy a, anything. So <laughs> we were actually like camping outside the booth until the very, very, very last World workshop awesome and <laughs> one of the Bandai like staff saw us. He's like, yeah, I think he felt bad for us. Like, you know what? These guys have been standing around here for the whole afternoon, and he just like beckoned us to come in. He's like, yeah, you know what, guys, just come in, just come in. Or we nice. have enough spaces, anyways. Oh, so that's I, nice I, I of him. I had the pleasure of meeting him uh, again. So was it yeah, the was same feeling? Good. Can you describe your feeling again when you saw him the second oh, time? He 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 recognized us. Yeah. No. <laughs> and then you know he, he spoke with us in english uh, wait he could uh, speak in english it's just very very basic it doesn't matter basic. the guy's fluent very in basic. english i'm sure he is <laughs> very, 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 very basic english but anyways we, we got him to sign like the the, the little medal that we got at otago's one nice uh, for yeah. The, uh, yeah. that's the pin right uh the speak, pin, pin. speaking of uh bandai and and other companies it looks like you're outside the tamiya uh what is yeah, it? headquarters we, we traveled to shizuoka city which is like the city where Bandai, Tamiya, and a bunch of other Japanese model companies were situated. Yeah. And that, that, that's me in front of the Tamiya main building. That's not the factory where they make the models. That's actually more their business. Division. Like their office so, administration. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Inside, I think if you scroll forward, you're going to see like there's, they have a little museum. Wow. Yeah. There's yeah. like, uh, have you, yeah. uh, this is totally segueing, but like, were you ever yeah. into the Tamiya mini four wheels? I was. I, was. <laughs> yeah, I, I still have some of mine. We have a circuit here in Toronto. It's no, almost yeah, yeah, yeah. like an underground uh, racing. Oh, wow. Actually, if you connect with uh, Alex uh, in our Side Six uh, okay. community, he yeah. runs that place, and it's literally in a. How am I going to describe it? It's so cool. You ever heard of underground racing? Right, yeah, underground like racing. Street racing. Street racing. He yeah. his. The where this is located is in a parking lot level two of Pacific Mall. Oh, so oh, if wow. you guys are there, <laughs> in there's a little, it's it's part of the core of the building near the elevator. So he rented okay. out a room in that's the so parking cool. lot level, and that's, that's where so people cool. race. And I have friends as well. Um, I have a couple of uh, four wheels here. We should talk about that after the show because like I want to compare some vehicles with you. <laughs> yes, mine are all in the storage. I don't oh have, man, I don't have it with me. Yeah. All right, let, let, let's continue anyways, on with your adventure. Anyways, uh, you yeah. are spreading Y on what? What is that logo up there? Blue logo. Uh, so I think after the. Where did you go um, after that? So yeah, so the Y is that that that's the. Uh, Bandai. Bandai. Oh, it is a Bandai. Headquarters. Yeah, uh, we were, were. I think we came in like after business hours. But <laughs> normally, I don't think to give give tours to public. Anyway, you don't ask good. for tours. You make your own tour. You go up there. You open the yeah, door. You go show me door, your Gundam. Right? All right, yeah. that's what's gonna happen yeah. there. It was very cool to, to go to the place. <laughs> yeah, man, to go to the place where like you know where Gundams come from. Like that. That's like that's so cool. Actually, we were walking around the building, yeah. and uh, we were on the side street. And we looked into the side of the building and we could see the little forklift loading the Bandai uh, shipment boxes <laughs> into trucks. Who knows, awesome. where, who, who knows where they're going, right? But we saw like the... We caught them you could have the tried act. to get some uh, some boxes uh, accidentally falling off from those trucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yeah. next one here looks like you are in the... What is it, The Gundam Cafe now or...? No, no, no. This is actually a place. It's also in Shizuoka City. Okay. It's uh, it's called the Shizuoka Hobby Square. 
Ah. It's a little museum. It's a museum that was founded jointly by all the, the main model companies in the city. Yeah. And they all have their own like historical section, right? Nice. So this picture you see is the Bandai section. You see all their like popular uh, <clears throat> models and like master grades and high grades. Just took a picture of that for for memory's sake. For memory's sake, the next picture here is the unicorn statue. Yeah, so what was that Japan, like? <laughs> what was Japan without going to Gundam Base? Absolutely, right? absolutely. So yeah, so I mean, um, like first time seeing a unicorn, I'm a big like I I will never not like the unicorn because like you know because for me it's like even building the old like the the master grade. Yeah, like, the master grade unicorn was my second or third like Gunpla model. And studying, I was studying like engineering at the time, and I was just like amazed <laughs> that they were able to make it transform the way they do in the anime. It and is, the, yeah. The, the head transformation is exactly. Like, it's close yeah. enough. I mean, it's close a representation yeah. of what the, what the model is. And yeah. uh, what were your some of your initial feelings when you uh, saw the uh, unicorn? Like, like, don't don't bash me over this because I my first reaction. Is actually like, oh, it's smaller than I thought. Because <laughs> I mean, it's a huge kind of statue. Yeah. I, I, we don't know what 18 meters look like. Yeah. In in, cause in real life, person, yeah. You see it. You see like, it in the book. You see it like, yeah, oh, it's about this book. high. Yeah. yeah. But like seeing that in person was super cool. And then just looking at it, I was like, oh, cool. So that's what a Gundam looks like in real life. Was how big. Here, it is. Here's a question for you, Nate. Did you touch yeah. it? Did you did you I, sneak in? I don't know if did I you touched. sneak in and you touch that metal and be like, yeah, I touch a Gundam? I might have. I don't remember. <laughs> but actually, one, one thing, one thing that was very cool. Okay, if you look in the picture of the unicorn, it's at night. Uh, there's a lot of like people crowded around it taking yeah. pictures, and there's people from dude, there's people from all over the world there. I could okay? see that. It's, yeah. it, it's like a gathering for Gunpla fans. Like, oh, it is the like mecca. Meta, it is know? it is it's like meta, the, that yeah. that black uh, slate. A uh, rock, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that everybody's so gonna. It's, get it's, like, to. it's so cool just seeing like people from all around the world, you know, in one place sharing the love of like the hobby. Like for that, yeah. I, I I was really touched by that, and of course, seeing it transform in real life is also cool. We have like a cool light show. Going on. So while you are in Japan, obviously you did go and check out the rest of the uh, the displays there. Um, here yeah, it looks yeah. like uh, what is this? Like a table rack of what's what's going on here? So I think, I think if you look, uh, that's I think uh, on on the picture it might be. It's the stage. Yeah, like, it looks like sorry. I'm like I had to like zoom in a bit on this one just because it's small. It is the uh, yeah. like a diorama of the Bandai factory. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, we weren't able to get inside the Gundam factory, the Bandai factory. Yeah. But, but we got the next best thing, which is the bottle. <laughs> The Bandai factory, so you can see what's going on. Close there. enough for that. And what else did you see here? It looks like there are some works now. Um, yeah, the, the, these were works done by uh, I think past GPWC winners. Okay. Um, but I think that was done maybe by the gentleman from Thailand. I'm not sure. Uh, but oh, like, this is the one where it's like the uh, Medusa yeah. versus the Trojan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very mm. cool. The next one here. Oh, there is Ver Ver Ed. Oh, Ver Ed. one yeah. of my favorite yeah, builders. I mean, Dude, like the, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, you look at the level of detail yeah. and like uh, and effort he puts into that build. It it's so it's cool. just unreal, man. I, I was like, I took uh, like a lot of pictures of that kid, and uh, and been the Dundum Steagle there. And then, it's like, while you're cool. taking photos, Ed Ed himself would come out of the shadows and be like, Yeah, yeah, I yeah, did that. Yeah. You like yeah. it? He you like that? <laughs> he just disappears back into the shadow. This guy has been so elusive. I've been following his work. I think yeah? the first inspiration I had with the Pistons uh, oh. was one of his Zeta creation back in the day. He, he did a Zeta one. And he, that was my first introduction to the chest. And then there's Pistons coming out. And then when I saw IBO, and I'm like, Ver Ed yeah. right there with the exposed, uh, exposed uh, Piston. Uh, chest fiction. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The next yeah. one here is the uh, the Axia. This is the one with the forced uh, perspective, right? Yeah, that was the one where it was like sort of floating inside the uh, space station, and yeah. you had like a cool infinity mirror yeah. effect in the back there. But yeah, that that, that was the winner for twenty eighteen. Right. Yeah, this is before our boys went there for the 2019. Um, yeah. It looks great. Um, what can you tell us about this? Uh, like that one, I was just very like uh, mesmerized by that display. This is right away. You, you look at it. It's like first of all, the size is impressive. Yeah. 
And also just the way he painted that like carbon fiber texture. Yeah, it looks so um, awesome. And yeah, the LED so lights weird. around there yeah, as well, yeah. right? Yeah, I think maybe he's powering it with like a USB. I don't know how, but when I went, the lights were still on. So I knew the power source had to be routed inside the... It's, oh, it's, it's powered by the GN drive. Everybody oh, knows GN that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, like I, I was able to... Uh, like if you go on my Facebook page, I took a video of the walk around of that entry. Yeah. Very, very cool. The level of like the detail, like, you know, like, you know, dude, like if we talk about the hobby in, in Japan, like man, people in Japan and in Asia have years ahead of us in North America. Um, I mean, they, yeah, this Gunpla is their culture. It's part of their, their culture, you know? And us in North America, we're still playing catch up, you know? And we're we are still, playing uh, a really good catch up on that. I mean, like we've been represented by some of the best GPWC yeah. representatives of Canada. We have Simon, we have Ryan, we Ryan, have, Nico. What's, what's Nico? Is yeah. that his name? I keep forgetting that guy. <laughs> Does he post yeah. even? I don't even see him anymore, you know? So, uh, yeah. Last photo here. Uh, it looks like it is a photo of a whole bunch of markets. Is this Akiba? Yeah, that's, that's Akiba. Akiba? So that's, yeah. that's literally while walking. One of the last days I stayed in Tokyo, uh, just, you know, walking around, you know, being like a anime fan and otaku, that's kind of where you have to go, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we visited a lot of stores. How many things did you bring back home, man? <laughs> I, I brought, actually, surprisingly, Surprisingly, this trip, the only mecha I brought back was related to uh, Full Metal Panic. You remember that, that show? Yep, I uh, remember Full Metal. Full Metal Panic. I actually bought a metal build, a uh, live attend from uh, Full Metal Panic. Yeah. I was able to track one down. Uh, and also, I bought, bought a bunch of like art, art books and design books from my favorite like Gundam and mecha. Those things that are artists. easily br be brought back yeah. kind of deal. Yeah, easily, easily brought back. Because so, I know like Gunpla, I can get that like locally right so awesome just, being there, just, <laughs> just just to be in japan and you know hanging out uh, around akiba walking around was great it's it really something Nice. Okay, so uh, we are in the in the end part of the photos, but we are going to yeah. turn to a couple of uh, Instagram, social media, Facebook questions. Uh, the first question here is from Set, and he yeah. said here uh, <clears throat> uh, he used the new armored Komodo products, and if so, uh, what are his, his thoughts and process of using it? Is it easier than traditional GSI and Vallejo? That one I unfortunately can't answer because I haven't personally used uh, Armor Komodo. Like, uh -huh. personally, I, I don't do a lot of metallic themed paints. I even for what I use for metallics are mostly like Mr. Carter metallics and Tamiya paints. For me, like, if I can just get the metallic look, I, it's good enough. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not a big into like metal uh, but i'm sure there's like plenty of like you know, guys online to uh for that product and explain what it is awesome yeah. the next question here is from andrew yeah. um after uh you know you saw uh what the timeline like slash universe what mm -hmm. hang on here after <laughs> i copied it wrong i'm totally butchering it sorry andrew something with you you see i think yeah uh, what, 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 what timeline slash universe uh do you yeah. like the best okay and yeah. uh which, which one would you build from? Yeah, so one thing was, well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big, like, UC fan. Uh, like, uh, obviously, I, I enjoy Seed, and I also enjoy Double. Like, Double O, the two seasons, was, like, the, like, um, I, I watched that, like, from beginning to end, and I enjoyed that for footy. And then in UC, uh, obviously, we have so many, like, like um, so, so much of the franchise to draw, draw from. So I think, like, most of my future builds are probably still going to be uh, in the UC timeline. But if I was able to build something not UC, I would say I would actually venture into maybe like my own mecha creation, you know, something that's just or, or, or originally original mech. Would you have related. still been a Federation or a Zionic? Uh, definitely Zion. Yeah. <laughs> that, definitely Zion. Yeah. that is correct. Okay. And uh, we got another <laughs> question here um, Zeta Gundam. Uh, yeah. Why didn't you finish it? Question mark. I I'm not sure. Because well, one one thing was you had the uh, the trend, new translation movies. Is that what it's called? They come the compilation. The three movies. parts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't get to watch the movies because like there was too many like transitions between newer animation and the old school animation. So that kind of threw me off. So in the series itself, I don't know where I I forgot like where I left left it from. But I like. I, I enjoy reading the Gundam Wiki uh, a lot. 
So I knew like the Zeta story already. You know so, of it. You just haven't yeah, fully so started yeah, start I, to I, finish. I know <laughs> what, what happens to, to Neo. I know what happens to Patimus to Sirocco. I know what the whole deal is with like the grips and Char and you know. Uh, Absolutely. Like, uh, so and, what's yeah, gonna happen, so. Nate? Is in if I have you in the next segment, we will gonna be doing a whole bunch of quiz on Zeta Gundam. So you oh, better boy. you better catch up. Yeah, and all of it. Watch the movie. I, I would love to see uh, how much you that you would retain. And you sound like someone that would love it anyway. So again, yeah. please watch it when you can. That's yeah, from yeah. Jonathan. <laughs> Wants to watch it because he, he will judge you. He will he will I look at it. you with 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 despise. I don't want that. <laughs> um, we're approaching a couple more questions here. Um, let's see what is a good one here, just to keep in time. Uh, what advice or towards our beginners, people who yeah. want to get into the hobby, people who are yeah. curious about that. What kind of advice uh, can you give these guys? Uh, you, you know, when they're with with their interest in approaching the hobby. So you know, if you're just approaching, because uh, a lot of people get into Gun Gundam not necessarily through the Gundam shows. Yeah, right? like they'll, they'll get into it because it's always oh, a cool robot, right? I have personally, I have a lot of friends who got into Gundam purely because they love the coolness of the mecha. Yeah. So for me, it's like you know, if you want to jump into the hobby, literally there's a billion, I know, billion, like an infinite number of kids that you could choose from. So you know, go at your own pace. You know. Look, look through like um, Google, look through Pinterest, look through like blogs and social media. See, like at, at one point, you're going to have like uh, Gunfla and Mecha designs that are going to appeal to you. You're going to be like, oh, no, I really like the design from this show or from that show. And maybe that could be a bridge for you to watch the, the, the show that's relating to that. Or like, you know, like because the, the, yeah. Gunfla now is so easily... Uh, accessible and Gundam too. Like you can watch Gundam like from the official channel on, on YouTube. Absolutely. To Gundam dot info, I believe, or oh, something yeah. like that on YouTube. So yeah, and then you know, and uh, at one point, if you want to proceed further into the hobby, you're gonna see that you know, the more kit that you build, the more knowledge you're gonna have, like you know, for for uh, for the hobby. And at one point, maybe you're gonna be like, oh, you know what? I, I like the design of this model kit, yeah. but if I were to change one thing, it would be this. Right. So right there is, is like a stepping stone to customizing your own kit. Because for me, it's like to get the max out of this hobby, I think everybody should get into like Gunpla customization at one point or another, just to try it out. Yep, be it kit bash or scratch yeah. build or even scratch like part swap, the, right? Part swap or even like panel lining. Because now like when I started, like we we didn't have like uh, easy uh, uh, accessible tools like scribers and chisels, right. right? But now like almost every store in Canada can carry like, even in the U.S. Uh, you can carry like scribers. So like I look at Instagram and social media. It's like one of the first things people do is to make custom panel lines, and yep. I think that's great because it shows that like the hobby is being more accessible to a lot more people. And the more you know, more exposure we can get, the more growth we can get for, for, uh, for us, right? That's for, awesome. Yeah, no, and those are really good points. So guys, go on your own pace, explore, yeah. create, yeah. learn. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't That's be afraid it. to try new things. Just that that make is mistakes great. mistakes. <laughs> learn, learn from it, mistakes. right? Yeah, we, we never, we never fail. Learn. It's either you, yeah. you win or you learn, and that and is... Yeah, and don't be afraid to ask questions. That's very important. That's awesome. And uh, if people do have questions, Nate, uh, what are the social media uh, platforms you are active in? Where can they find yeah. you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram. I think you have the little handle right there. It's at NATO Builds, N-E-I-T-O Builds. And that's NATO. Uh, Sorry. It's Nito. Andrew says it as Nito, but yeah. uh, anyway, so, so I, I'm active on both Facebook and Instagram. It's, it, it's the same handles at Nate Nato Builds. You can find me on both platforms. So. Awesome. And Nate, yeah, hope to have you again on the show in the future. Oh, I'd, love, I'd love to come back. It man. was such it was, a, was so much fun. a fun and trip. Yeah. Like we went from all over the place, from building stuff yeah, to, your, to your trip in yeah. Japan and, and yeah. hugging uh, Meiji Kawaguchi twice. Very, <laughs> very happy that you uh, managed to come out to the show tonight. Uh, thank you again for Thank tuning you so in. much for having me, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a great experience.
Awesome. Time passes by. Time, time passes by fast. Oh no, yeah, we we're like time. almost like an hour yeah. and a half here, which I is know, great. I know, this is good, <laughs> no, yeah. this is good timing. Um, so I good will boy. say good night to you, uh, Nate, and uh, you know, hope to catch up with you again. But we'll talk after this just to uh, cool, tie, tie stuff off. All yeah. right, <laughs> see you, Nate. Yeah. See you, man. Okay, and that was the episode with feature builder Nate. He uh, check out his Instagram and Facebook on the comments below. Uh, as you know, this show could not be possibly, uh, you know, go on without the sponsors. Uh, and this show is powered by USA Gundam Store. So visit www.usagundamstore.com. Use my discount code AOMECA10 to receive a uh, discount off your purchases. Um, the next episode for AOMECA Live is going to be Monday at 9 p.m. with a new build, uh, live build session. We're going to be building the RX-78 Beyond High Grade. Looking forward to checking that out. Uh, this video of our uh, presentation with uh, Nate will be uploaded uh, in the next day uh, on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash AOMECA. Uh, it would be appreciated if you could hit that like and subscribe button below uh, to help me uh, create more projects in the future. All right. Thank you for tuning in on Saturday night. My name is Ariel from AOMECA. And, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of your night. Hopefully, uh, it's a good one. All right. See ya.